Hello there, one and all, and thank you very much for tuning to episode 321 of Love at First Scent with me, Persolais, coming to you live from YouTube. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do consider doing so. Click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos. And if you would like to find out how you can support my work, you can find information about all of that in the video description below. First comment I see has popped up, and it goes to Chang, who's saying hello. Bonsoir, I presume you're still in Nice, Chang. Ilias is here as well, saying hello, and Maudeline is saying hi, everyone from Denmark. Love, Violette. Okay, so this is a single perfume review video, and I had to get this done uh, as soon as possible. I have not been able to resist spraying it because there was no way that I could resist this one. I have been waiting for this one, says Enchamad. This is brand new from Hermès, and just the fact that it's brand new from Hermès is interesting, but it's also in addition to the Hermès Sans line, the, to the more exclusive line. And it's called, can you see the name there? You all know the name anyway. It's Violette Volinka, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Apparently, it's the name of a particular type of Russian leather, and we will be finding out a little bit more about that in due course. Um, but I, I think we need to spray. So very, very, very quickly, for those of you who don't know, the Hermesens line was created quite a few years ago now by Jean-Claude Elena, who was the in-house perfumer at Hermes at the time, and he wanted them to be seen as perfume watercolours. They um, always showcased or focused around a particular ingredient. And I think I'm right in saying that every single Hermès name checks uh, an ingredient in its name. So the, 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 the lavender, no, the, the licorice one has got licorice in its name. There is an amber one that's got amber in its name. There's a rose one that's got rose in its name. There's an iris one and so on and so forth. And Christine Nagel, when she took over as in-house perfumer at Hermes, she continued that tradition. Um, and so now, sure enough, we've got a violet, uh, Violet Volinka. Um, Hope this is good, says Esumar. Never knew that Osman Thunan was one of the originals, says Rich Mitch. Um, yeah, and I don't think I knew that either. I'd have to go back and look at the dates. Um, uh, but, but what's interesting is that we haven't actually had uh, an Hermès from her, I think, for about four years. When Jean-Claude Elena left, uh, people wondered if the Hermès would continue. Certainly the garden range from Hermès continued. We've had one Jardin from Christine Nagel, I suppose we'll do another one. The Hermès she she gave us um, five in one go because she gave us an oud, she gave us a cardamom, she gave us an iris and so on, and, and, and a jasmine cedar and so on and so forth. Um, a bit late, says Eric, considering buying this blind, honestly. Um, I think, I think well, depending on what you like. So, she is back. Hermes is back. It's a violet. So it's got a kind of violety, purpley cap. But the Volinka also tells us that it's meant to be a leather. And I have worn this at least twice already and sprayed it on a blotter. Um, and it is with considerable excitement that I am able to spray it for you now. Hmm. Because overall, it gets it gets the Persolais thumbs up, but but with some qualifications, with some thoughts, with some caveats, with some with some questions. Okay, but what are you what are you getting when you're smelling this? You get straight away a very very definite leather, uh, quite soft, quite textured, perhaps heading in the direction of suede, but but also very very definitely fleshy and animalic, and not unlike that kind of slightly petroleum infused, you know, sort of slightly rocket fuel infused leather that Christine Nagel um, gave us in Gallo or Gallop, Gallo d'Hermes, which, which uh, as you know, I happen to think is gorgeous. In many ways, this is like the Hermesens cousin or the Hermesens sibling of Gallo. So if you've got a sample of Gallo in your collection, or you've got a bottle of Gallo in your collection, if you spray it, you will get some sense of how this perfume works. Because Gallo is about this beautifully textured, suede-like, soft, and yet animalic leather paired with rose. Whereas here you get that kind of similar sort of leather, but paired with violet. And the violet, violet and rose are not a million miles away from each other, okay? So when you think of those sort of retro um, lipstick accords that are used in perfume, they play 
the violet rose card quite heavily. You think of something like Lipstick Rose from Frederick Mal, or even um, Sophia Grossman's original Tresor for Lancôme. Um, Sounds like one made for me already, says Maudlin. I'm a huge fan of the violet and iris mix, says Esomar, for example, and Healy's iris. Um, I was just getting ready to type lipstick rose vibe, says Tripti. Yes, except that lipstick rose is very, very much more about the rose and the powder and the retro feel. This is very definitely about the leather with, um, with this violet inflection. And it calls to mind another Hermessence, one of the final ones that uh, Jean-Claude Elena did for the uh, for the range, Cuir d'Ange, which as you know, I love as well. And that was this kind of angelic and yet also surprisingly filthy leather. This isn't dirty, but it is it is animalic. Vibes of Misia too, says Pradeep. Now, I didn't think of Misia actually. I know that Misia gets, this is Chanel's Misia, right? I know that that gets a huge amount of love out there. I need to revisit my bottle because I was never overly taken with Misia. But so, caveats and questions, while the blotter is doing its thing, the one question, the, the, the one thing that I have about this is that I'm not sure how original it is. There are definite shades in there of things like Tuscan leather, of, um, of scents that have played on the violet um, leather combination before. I'm thinking of when Bottega Veneta did their signature scent, when was it? Maybe about eight years ago now or 10 years ago. I'm pretty sure that was composed by Michel Almarac. That had that kind of violet leather feel to it as well. The leather that Michel Almarac did for Armani Privé, I can't remember its name at the moment, but um, th th there's a similar kind of thing happening here. I guess what makes this one what what presents a sort of point of departure here from those other ones is that the other ones rely very very heavily on the effect of violet leaf, which is a sort of super green material, whereas this really doesn't shy away from the the, the flowers, the actual violet flowers. So you get that sweet, um, almost sickly sweet, you know, sort of sugary Palmer violet feel um, from the iron owns coming through, sitting alongside the leather in a really, really interesting way. Love Violet and Hermès, says Jeanne. I have Misia and it's a dead ringer for Maison Violette's Pourpre d'Automne. Um, sort of a little sister of Cuir d'Ange, says Paul Perfeu, maybe. And somebody asked whether it's purple. Now, I, to be honest, no, I didn't get purple. I got more kind of suede dark, kind of camel brown type colours. But attractive nonetheless, except maybe doesn't score terrifically high marks for originality, but it does kind of push the genre in, in a different direction slightly. What's also interesting is that the range has now moved so far from that minimalist, translucent watercolour feel that Jean-Claude Elena started with. Elena himself, in a way, moved away from that with things like uh, Cuir d'Ange and Epice Marine. He kind of gave us one of those watercolors with with his with his uh, Lily of the Valley with Muguet Porcelain. But when you think back to the earlier um, uh, Hermessons that really were quite pared down, you know, something like Santal Masoya that is hardly even there. Almost some people would say um, th th this this is this is quite far away from it. Now I found out some interesting things actually about this leather material, because I, I don't know much about leathers or different types of leathers. I don't have a very detailed press release. So rather than reading the brief press release blurb, I thought I would share with you a few bits of information that I found on the Hermes uh, site about the leather. Um, so this is from their site, and I won't read it word for word, but it says in 1920s Paris, it was the fashionable scent, so they mean Russian leather, fleeing a world they no longer recognized as their own, white Russians cherished it as a vestige of their grandeur. They put its name to a variety of fragrances, virile to varying degrees. Russian leather was all the rage with perfumers, it seduced women, yet the scent's origin was the warlike hide for the soldier's boots. According to the legend, Yufte, another of its names, was born when a Cossack rubbed his boots with birch bark to make them waterproof. This quality, plus its strength, made its reputation. Russian leather was the ageless material for binding books and lining the interiors of carriages. Solid but soft to the touch, it played to the senses. 
These talismans, remarks Sophie Mukin, sorry, don't know who that is, exude a mixture of Lapsang Souchong, cigar, and peat-rich whiskey. Yeah, very peaty, actually. The unique odor that is its signature. There is no doubt, however, that in the 18th century, it was one of the prized commodities in Imperial Russia's trade with the West, which remained the prime destination for the best skins tanned in the Moscow region until early in the 1900s. Then its secrets were drowned out in the tumult of the October Revolution. This is where it gets interesting. When Russian leather came back to life, it was on the other side of the English Channel in the early 1970s. Divers off the Cornish coast brought up the precious cargo of a two-master that had sunk when it hit a storm off the Plymouth Sound in 1786. I had no idea about any of this. If any of you out there, oh, EcoJock says, I remember this story. Well, there you go. The Meta Katerina had set sail from St. Petersburg for Genoa, but the hemp and Russian leather in its hold never reached their destination. For two centuries, the sea had kept the handsome rolls of leather wrapped in its protective silt. Their discovery by divers in such fine condition confirmed that this unique material is indeed rot-proof. Twenty years later, in the 1990s, Hermès acquired a dozen of these legendary skins. They were used to make sac à dépêche and Kelly bags, which can be admired in the Conservatoire, uh, the Hermès Conservatoire in Pantin, in Paris, outside Paris. But that was only the start. In 2011, a working group was set up. Its mission was to exhume the secrets of this leather with its lozenge-shaped grain, which was traditionally dyed red and then hardened and steeped in a strong-smelling oil. The work of investigation itself lasted six years with the collaboration of dogged and perfectionist artisans. In a bucolic little town in England, where <laughs> they have been honing the same techniques since Roman times. Oak bark is gathered by the barrowful and ground, Skins are plucked by hand, one by one, on ancient stands. These arrive unprocessed, thick with salt. First, they're given a facelift in a bath of lime and fresh water. Before they can be dried, split, stuffed, steeped in oils, and nished, nished. This is so not a vegan episode, is it? The skins then spend five months in a vat, soaking in a secret tree bark solution, a mixture of vegetable tannins. The secret of good tanning is a bit like making a good cup of tea. Tanning is all about letting time do its work, like aging a fine wine. Indeed, tanners often follow their nose when judging. With the help of all these professionals, it was finally possible to elucidate the secrets of making Russian leather like that mysterious oil derived from birch and other plants which strengthens and hardens a surface. And so, cut to Hermès at the moment, and Christine Nagel decided that she wanted to make a perfume that was inspired by this Volinka leather. And she says, I opted for Volinka leather, top notes. Its scent is so strong that I wanted to pull it in the opposite direction by pairing it with a delicate flower, the violet. And as the Hermes website itself says, it's a blend of intensity and sweetness. The violet Volinka eau de toilette is a perfect balance between the strength of Volinka leather and the subtle powdery notes of violet. And I guess that's what makes this scent really, really interesting. And I suppose it's a kind of dichotomy that, that Jean-Claude Elena himself was investigating or exploring in Cuir d'Ange, because there you had leather and angels. Here you've got the strong leather and violets. But I guess the difference there is that angels are quite larger than life supernatural huge figures whereas the violet is, is is quite a humble small unassuming little flower um with with a striking scent um and yeah the, the, i mean you know leather is an easy sell as far as i'm concerned so an hermes leather with leather was always going to be something that i would more than likely find interesting but that that sweetness comes through in in a very, very, very attractive fashion. And it, it is one of those contrasts that I love in perfumery and that I think only perfumery can do because it's it's innocence and danger, it's small and large, it's it's a vibrant color and the kind of brown, beige, camel hide. Um, really, really, really nice work, really, really nice work. Have you tried it on skin, says Woozy? Um, yes, absolutely. I've worn it several times already and I've really, really enjoyed it. And because I'm not doing anything particular after this broadcast, I can actually spray some more on skin um, in case you're interested. Yeah, prob probably even smoother on, on skin and smoother and yet, and yet the, the contrast comes out more as well. How was the longevity, says Woozy? 
absolutely fine for me very very good in fact um i wore it i can't believe i'm getting technical like this but i wore it yesterday when we went out and we were out for several several hours and i could i could still smell it on myself mind you i always do a combination of spraying on skin and on fabric and a bit on hair as well because i think that works too so definitely do check it out when you can the brand new Hermesence from Hermes, composed by Christine Agel. It's Violette Volinka. And all that remains for me to say, I think, is thank you very much for watching. There will be a blotter update on this one, and stay tuned to social media for details of more episodes coming to you soon. Until then, take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.